Hi, today I'd like to show you some things you can do with a pair of oscillators like these. So first of all this can make a triangle shape which just moves your speaker all the way in one direction and then all the way back down in the other direction. Let's hear what that sounds like. The next shape this can make is a sawtooth wave, uh, which in this oscillator's case goes straight up and then slowly back down again. So quick to rise, slow to fall. Some do the opposite, where they're slow to rise and quick to fall. It doesn't really make much difference, they sound the same either way. So let's have a listen to that. It sounds a bit louder because it's got more harmonics in it, but we don't really need to know yet what those are. We can come to that later on in another video. And third of all, it can make a, a pulse wave. Uh, right now, this is going to be in particular a square wave, which moves the speaker very quickly to one side, holds it there for a bit, then quickly moves it to the other side, holds it there for a bit, and so on. So let's listen to a square wave. Some oscillators can also make a sine wave, uh, this one in particular can't, uh, it's a bit more difficult to make a sine wave. Uh, Dopefords can do that just fine, although out of the different oscillators I think it was only the expensive one that did a, a fairly accurate sine wave, the rest is something a bit like it. And in general, uh, with analogue synthesizers, you tend to have shapes which are a bit like what they're supposed to be, and in all fairness that's part of the charm, that's what gives them their character, is that everything's not quite what it's supposed to be, it's something a bit like it, maybe a little distorted or a little bit wobbly, and that just adds to the character so that's fine. Synthesizers evolved out of organs and you can still see this in the octave setting on an oscillator otherwise known sometimes as the footing and it's measured in feet here as you can see and the higher the number the longer the pipe and therefore the lower the frequency so let's listen to a few different octaves. Now with the pulse wave in particular, it doesn't need to spend exactly half the time up and half the time down. It could spend say three quarters up and one quarter down, or vice versa, which again sounds the same to our ears. So let's uh, play around with that and hear what that sounds like. Now with this particular oscillator, uh, when you make the pulse a bit narrower, uh, it kind of makes the whole uh, signal in general kind of go to one side, it kind of raises the whole thing, which is not really supposed to do, but again, it's not really something we can hear, so it's not really something worth worrying about. Now instead of manually uh, changing the pulse width back and forth by hand, uh, we can do it automatically with this here low frequency oscillator, which is an oscillator just like this one, only much slower as its name implies. I've got it set to a triangle wave so far, and if we just attach this lead here, we can take the signal coming out of here and feed it into here. So the LFO will be controlling the pulse width back and forth. So let's listen to that. And we can change the frequency of the LFO, which will change how fast it's squishing and squashing that pulse width. So let's listen to that. If I just make it so you can see it. <laughs> Now you may have noticed there that the faster the LFO, the more out of tune the pulse wave sounded, and that's because a pulse wave is equivalent to having two sawtooth waves, one rising and one falling, and the frequency of the LFO is equivalent to how far detuned they are from each other, the difference between the frequencies of the two sawtooth waves. That's not what it's doing, but it's equivalent to that, as we will hear later.
So another thing you can do with a NetFO and a regular oscillator is instead of changing the pulse width, you can change the pitch if you have another input for the pitch, or if you don't, if you have a mixer, you could combine them on the way in. So let's have a listen to that. It can make longer notes sound a bit more interesting if you add a bit of a barto towards the end. Another interesting thing you can do with a single oscillator is you can sweep the pitch down, uh, like with this here envelope generator, uh, with each and every note, which can be useful for drum sounds uh, if you dial it in just right. If you have two oscillators, then the most obvious thing you can do with the second one is just listen to it at the same time as the first one. So we can mix them together on the way into the amplifier here, and that sounds like this. And the further apart you detune them, uh, the faster the beating sound, which is just like uh, when we were changing the LFO speed earlier. So let's listen to that. When mixing two oscillators together, another nice thing you can do is uh, split them an octave apart so that instead of sounding like this, or like this, they can sound like this. Now, I don't want to get into the technical side of ring mod right now because ring mod and amplitude modulation are a whole topic in themselves, but suffice to say that instead of mixing together two waveforms, you can send them both to a ring mod and by sweeping down the pitch of one of them, they will sound like this. Frequency modulation is another whole topic in itself, but suffice to say that when you do anything at an audible frequency, basically magic happens. So remember how you can use an LFO for vibrato? Instead, you can use a second oscillator for an extreme vibrato, and if you sweep the pitch of that second oscillator down, that will sound like this. Another fun thing you can do with two oscillators is to synchronize them together. Remember that an oscillator just makes a, a simple repeating shape. When you synchronize them together, you say to this oscillator, uh, when you finish drawing that shape and start again, tell this oscillator to do the same thing. So this one might get, say, a quarter of the way through drawing a triangle wave and get shunted straight back to the beginning, or it might get, say, one and three quarters of the way through and then get shunted straight back to the beginning and basically you're making fractional shapes which you can't make any other way. So by sweeping down the pitch of the one that you are listening to and sending the pitch of the note to both of them, you can get various interesting shapes like this. So let's change the amount we're sweeping the pitch by to get various more interesting shapes. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this video interesting and perhaps even useful. If you did, please consider sponsoring me on Patreon, like these fine and probably very beautiful people here.